Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at a keyboard which is a little bit spicy for Mike's Unboxing. This is the Thermaltake Argent RGB K5 with Cherry MX Speed Switches. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at Thermaltake's Argent RGB K5 Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Now, this one is a little bit on the spicy side. Now, when I say spicy, what I mean is this one is a little bit towards the upper edge of the limit of what I consider to be a decent amount of money to spend on a keyboard. Now, as most of you will know, we generally try to find bargains and cost-effective options to assist with your technology and gaming life. This particular keyboard may not entirely fit that bill, but we were sent it by Thermaltake and they said, can you take a look at it, see what you think of it. Um, I have got this on loan, it's not mine to keep, so I uh, do bear that in mind. And actually, that is one of the reasons why I'm slightly hesitant to actually review it, because I'm slightly scared that I will like it too much. In which case, I will have to bend over backwards, get out my wallet, and stump up nearly 215 UK pounds for this particular keyboard. Yeah, £215. So, for those of you that are looking for a budget option, as far as keyboards are concerned, then uh, yeah, maybe you want to try one of the ones in the links below. But, if you're looking for something which is extremely premium, has an exceptional build quality, and is built to last, then this is definitely worth a look. So in the video we'll go through, take a look at the packaging, see what we actually get, give a practical test, see what the keys sound like, and get my final thoughts at the end of it. And then you can see if it is worth you spending your 200 plus pounds on one of these fantastic keyboards. So let's start out with what is traditional on the channel and we'll take a look at the packaging, we'll go through what you get in the accessories, then we'll take a close look at the keyboard itself and then do some practical tests so you can see if uh, this is for you or not. So looking at the packaging, as you can see, it's from the Thermaltake branding and is using the Cherry MX speed switches. There is also actually an option as well for the Cherry MX Blue as well. Uh, I'll leave the pricing and all that kind of stuff in the video description below so you can check those out for yourself. It is obviously going to be compatible with uh, TT Sync and also TT RGB Plus and also the Razer Chroma RGB ecosystems. As you can see, it's got the Argent K5 RGB on there. So this is part of the Argent range, which is basically a premium range for gamers. Now, this particular keyboard is really, really well suited to go with either of the other Argent RGB mice which are the M5, both the wired and the wireless versions. So if you do want a completely premium desktop setup and you really love Thermaltake's RGB implementations, which are actually very, very good, then this might be just the thing for you. If you do want to see what the mice are like, then you can click on the links below as well, or also the cards up here, and you can take a look at the mice in the individual reviews. So one of the first things that strikes me about this particular keyboard is the design of it. So the design is slightly asymmetrical so there is a kind of wave to the keyboard itself as you can see there and also it does come included with a really nice padded wrist rest which i guess for 200 odd pounds you'd kind of expect that the switches themselves like we said this cherry mx speed switches so these are pretty much the cream of the crop as far as gaming keyboards are concerned they have a really really nice touch to them very fast actuation and they actuate around about 1.2 millimeters also as well, because they are a linear switch, there's no bump or anything like that. So it's a really, really fast action keyboard. So for gamers, fast action, stuff like that, you are gonna absolutely love this. The response and the actual feel of the keys themselves, you can take from me, is absolutely phenomenal. Moving right on to the back of the box, so it goes into a little bit more detail. So you've got 16.8 million RGB colors. Clearly we won't be testing that out. It's got the asymmetrical curve design, as it just says there, and also the detachable magnetic wrist rest, which uh, is optional. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. And actually, going on to that, the wrist rest itself is particularly well engineered, but we'll take a closer look at that a little bit later. Looking at the specifications, so as it says on the box there, so it's 100% Cherry MX mechanical switches, fully programmable keys with on-the-flight macro recording, metal volume control, and a 1000 hertz polling rate, and a USB pass-through audio out and a mic in jack. So the actual jack which is connected to the keyboard, which uh, we can take a closer look at now. So you've got three cables actually on the keyboard itself. So one is for the keyboard to actually register key switches, etc., and for RGB. The next one is a combo jack. So that will provide both microphone and also earphone. Obviously you will have to have a suitable connection to go into your motherboard or maybe your system front panel headers, that kind of thing. 
and the next one is a pass-through. So you can actually plug in additional USB devices actually to the back of the keyboard. So maybe if you wanted to plug in the M5 wireless dongle, you could certainly do that. Or again, you can put in wireless USB sticks, anything really that takes your fancy. It is only a USB 2 port, so don't be expecting rapid fast transfers, but certainly for things like headsets, uh, Wi-Fi adapters, that sort of thing is gonna be absolutely perfect. Looking a little bit closer at the cable, it is a really, really premium cable, and you've got really nice braiding all throughout. And it is actually a really chunky one, so this uh, should last very well. I guess it would have been really nice to see this as a detachable cable, but I guess because of the fact that you do have USB, the keyboard itself, and also the audio pass-through, then I guess that's a little bit more tricky to do, and this is certainly very convenient because it's just ready to go. Cable itself, really nicely braided, and you do have a little Velcro strap there to do a little bit of cable management should you need to. And again, everything about this just screams premium. Taking a look at the back of the keyboard, you can see here, there is where the pass-throughs terminate. So you've got the combo mic and headphone jack there, and you've got your USB port there, which is all well and good. And again, you can see some of this design language, which is transferred from the front to the back, where you've got this kind of asymmetrical swoosh type design there, which uh, I wasn't too sure if I liked. It's one of those things which I think people will either love or hate. For me personally, actually, I really like it. And the whole thing, again, is really, really super solid. There's virtually no deck flex or creak to it at all. It is very, very heavy. So yeah, it's very, very well made, very solid, great construction. Again, you'd expect that kind of thing for around about 200 pounds. Taking a look at the underside of the keyboard, so you can see we've got some rubber pads. So we've got a couple there. And also every part of the actual stand on the back is rubberized as well. So if you have it in the flat mode, then you've got a rubber pad there. That's on both sides. And the actual feet themselves are really clever. So there's an extended one, again, rubberized on there. Or you can flip it down just to give you a few millimeters of lift, which I think is a really nice option. And again, it's all rubberized as well. So it's not gonna slip around on your desktop. And to be honest with you, because of the weight of this thing, it is particularly lumpy. And it just basically doesn't really wanna move unless you really do push it hard. And this is one of the things which I actually appreciate because we do have, which is a really nice feature on the end here, a kind of knurled wheel on the end. So this is very much like kind of car audio and that sort of thing. So you've got this really nice twist knob, which is for volume control. And also if you want to mute the sound in your game, so maybe you're being interrupted or someone comes in, you can just press the mute button, push it in like that. And again, because the rubber feet and also the physical weight of this keyboard, you press it in and the keyboard doesn't want to sort of shove across the desk when you do it. Again, a really great sign of quality. Now, before we take a look closer at the keys, the switches and the illumination on it, Let's go through some of the accessories. So like we said before, we've got the thermal take pad there. So that is a wrist rest. It's got a really nice design to it. Again, tons and tons of rubber pads on there to keep it nice and steady on your desk. Also, you've got this flip out section, which contains the magnets, which attach to the front. Although I have found the magnet is actually quite strong and will pretty much stay there anyway, even without that folded out. If you do fold it out, which actually isn't the easiest of things to do, maybe I guess because it's new and when you do it, it kind of locks into place and it keeps it a little bit more secure. I think personally, I would have liked to have seen a few more magnets in there just to give it a little bit more strength there and possibly a slightly, maybe odd design or maybe there is a reason for it. The actual wrist pad itself is only around about 95% of the width of the keyboard. Now, I guess that kind of makes sense because it's unlikely you're going to be typing with your wrists kind of at the very far end. So you only really need the support towards the central area. So that's absolutely fine. But some people may prefer to have that kind of clean line where the actual wrist rest matches up the rest of the keyboard. Let me know in the comments what you think. Again, from this angle, you can see the that really nice curvature of that front metal, which just gently glides down through there and follows around. Now, you may think that the keyboard, this section is actually a little bit lower. It isn't, and there is kind of like a raised deck section there. So all the keys are at the same height, which gives you a really nice feel when you're actually using it. We should quickly talk about what we get inside the packaging. So first of all, you get your kind of user manual, user guide, etc., and it tells you about the warranty, the keys, and all that kind of stuff. You also get the warranty policy. There is a keycap remover, and you're probably thinking, oh, that's good, why is there a keycap remover? Well, they've decided to include some additional keys, which are for you gamers out there who are particularly into uh, metallic red. So you can use these on the ASDW keys, etc. And there's a set of eight of those there. All of the keys are double shot, as you'd expect, really. And these are with the kind of Cherry MX type stems. So they're pretty much cross compatible with most keyboards. So maybe if you wanted to sort these out for maybe some pudding style caps, then certainly you could do. Again, 
down to the individual on that one. Also included is a little guide there which tells you basically how to twist the knob. So let's take a closer look at the keyboard now that it is illuminated. So this is just plugged into my Windows PC behind. You can, if you want to, you can install the uh, iTake software from Thermaltake and you can take total control of this keyboard. You can define macros, make lighting adjustments, all that kind of stuff. And obviously you can then synchronize it with other devices that are supported by the Thermaltake iTake software, such as again, the Argent RGB mouse, some of their lighting strips, all that kind of usual stuff. One thing you will notice about this keyboard now, we've got some particularly bright lights in the studio, as you're probably aware. So the lighting on this actually is slightly subdued in my opinion. Now you guys know me, I'm very much into RGB and lighting. So this for some people may be a little bit on the dull side. What they've done is they've actually made the keycaps so they don't actually bleed through a great deal. So you get plenty of underglow as you can probably see and you've probably seen from some of the B-roll. But the actual RGB is actually quite muted. So this is currently on the brightest setting. You can actually adjust the brightness on the brightness button here manually. So that is on full brightness. So basically off level one, which you can essentially not really see at all in this lighting. Level two, three, four, five, and then off again. So we'll put that back on the brightest one so you can get an idea of what it's like. I think it's actually really nice the way it's been done. It's not going to be one of those keyboards where you're typing away with your slightly dimmed lights maybe in your gaming den, that kind of thing. It isn't going to dazzle you, so that is a real benefit. Sometimes you find these are a little bit too dazzling, you can't quite see what is going on. So also on the keyboard you can take direct control of all the lighting and various other functions. So there are some kind of hotkeys which function as uh, kind of shortcuts as well. So you've got one on the top there on the F1 key for email home for internet etc usual kind of thing you'd expect to see personally myself i would really like to see separate keys on these i know it's not everyone's cup of tea but for me personally i'd quite like to have hot keys separately at the top there is actually plenty of room here on this uh, metal section so maybe a couple of extra keys might have been useful on there it may take away from some of the design i guess that is probably what they were thinking of and Probably a lot of people, especially gamers, probably don't really use hotkeys to go into email programs, that kind of stuff, because mostly it's all web-based these days. But anyway, I digress. So you've got the calculator button there. Also as well on this section, you've got options for lighting controls, etc., speed and the lighting style, that kind of thing. So if you press the function button and press, well, actually, as soon as you press the function button, you can see that those buttons there actually change color to RGB. So you can go in and choose various increments of RGB, red, blue, and green, etc. But if you press this button here, then it basically cycles through the various options of lighting. So if you don't want to go into the actual iTake software, you don't necessarily have to. And you've got the uh, kind of usual lighting setups there, explode it, that kind of thing. There was rain and like a snake version. So yeah, pretty much everything you could expect is there. One thing that I really wasn't expecting is actually the level of detail in the lighting. So some of you may have already noticed, and probably again from some of the B-roll, there is actually an underlit section as well. So there is a LED, which kind of goes all the way around the keyboard, all the way around. So it gives you that really nice kind of underglow. Again, you've probably seen from some of the B-roll when the lights are off, the kind of RGB lighting can be used either as a white light to kind of illuminate what's around it. Or if you choose a specific color, then the underglow will actually change to the color that you've set the keyboard to as well. Again. All of that is ultimately configurable in the iTake software. So moving along, you've got other options here. So again, you've got the RGB. Um, also, you've got all your macros and programmable buttons here. Memory recall, uh, mode light, scroll lock, LEDs, etc. Tons and tons of different configurable options. Also, something which I particularly like is the dedicated media buttons. So you've got stop, rewind, play, pause, and fast forward. And underneath that, you've got the gaming mode. So you can press that to turn on gaming mode. Also got your Windows lockout key. And also as well, again, you've got your lighting button there to adjust the lighting actual brightness. So pretty much everything you want to do is on this keyboard without installing any software. I particularly do like this uh, knurled wheel on the end for the volume control. I think that is a really, really nice premium touch. And again, that wheel is exactly the same design as the Argent M5 mouse. So if you're having this as a matching desk set, I think you'd be extremely pleased with it. I have actually done some uh, work with this and also used it on my PC and I've got to be honest with you, it is going to be hard to give this one up, it really is. I'll give you some examples of the key noises now.
So that is what the keyboard actually sounds like in use. Obviously, I'm not typing anything in specific, just tapping the keys, but you get the general idea. Moving the keycaps again, really simple to do. They can just pull off and they do reveal those Cherry MX silver switches, which again are, yeah, they found, I'm lost for words really. Using the Cherry MX silver switches, it is a wonderful thing. If you've not tried them already, I strongly, strongly suggest you try them out. If you're somebody who types a lot uh, for us, when we're answering questions on YouTube, etc., and obviously on this video, if you've got any questions, put them in the comment section below. But for writing emails, uh, filling out forms and stuff, just typing on it is an absolute joy. It really, really is. I do find with other keyboards, after using the Cherry MX Silvers, other keyboards, even Cherry MX Reds, they just don't feel as precise and as responsive. There is something to be said for Cherry MX Silver switches. I'm not much of a keyboard snob, as most of you will know. We've tried all sorts of keyboard from kind of anything from a tenor upwards, but it genuinely it does make a difference. So if you're looking for that very, very premium and essentially what I would consider to be the ultimate typing experience, I would definitely check this one out. Again, I'll put some links in the video description below so you can try it for yourself and see what the prices are like. I guess it's gonna come down to ultimately, do you have deep enough pockets or do you use your keyboard enough that the link between you, the keys, and the computer is so important that you can justify spending the money. I think a lot of people are going to come to the price, they'll look at the keyboard and think, yeah, it looks fantastic, great design, love the whole setup, but I think £215 for a keyboard is a little bit north of where I would like to be. If this was on the market for about 150 maybe 140 150 I think they'd have a very competitive keyboard on their hands and I think it would probably sell by the bucket load. I think being just over £200 is going to be a red flag to some people. But again, do let us know what you think in the comments below. I'm really genuinely interested to know if people are out there likely to spend in that kind of money on this keyboard. I might have to because I do like it a lot. Anyway, I've ruffled on for way too long. If there's anything you want to know about this keyboard, again, links will be in the video description below. Please feel free to ask me any questions. I will be using this for a little bit until uh, they actually ask for me to send it back. I'm not going to give it up lightly. So yeah, if you've got any comments on what it's like to use, what the switches are like. One thing I probably should mention as well, the switches, as far as I can tell, are captive. So if you did want to change them or if they break, which is unlikely because Cherry Mech switches are good for like 50 million presses. Uh, well, 50, yeah, 50 million presses. So that shouldn't be the case, but they are what I, what I can see to be as being soldered. Uh, I will have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure they're soldered, so they're not going to be that easy to replace should you need to. But if you're spending £215 on a keyboard, I guess if it goes wrong, you'll, hey, you just buy another one, won't you? Anyway, that has been the Thermal Take Argent K5 RGB Premium Keyboard with Cherry MX Silver Switches. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.